So that this next book, the author is not only a worker in biotech, and not only did she have a debut novel come out and be sold in actual stores, but it's way better than anything I've written so far. So my self-esteem is kind of in the shitter right now, but on the plus side, this is pretty good. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. All right, so The Guns Above is different than I expected at first. Like, when I read the description and every and I saw the cover art, I thought that it would be more of a steampunk adventure, and it has some elements of that, sure, but overall I'm not sure what to what category to put it in. It doesn't quite have magic or anything, so I definitely can't call it fantasy, but also, it doesn't really have any technology that's too far out there or anything, so I can't really call it sci-fi either. Like, for the most part, the technology in this book is uh, early 19th century, so like, they still have single-shot muskets and cannons and that sort of thing. Uh, pretty much the only thing that is more advanced would be the airships, which in real life weren't invented until uh, 1897, I believe. And uh, those were also all made out of metal and stuff, and they had, like, uh, diesel engines and things. Whereas this, they have, like, old-school boiler engines, and the frames are made of plywood, and really the whole thing just sort of feels like it's very fragile and about to fall apart. And that's certainly a neat setting. It, it also takes place in a different world from ours as well. So... While I wouldn't quite call it steampunk, and honestly I don't know what to call it, I did quite enjoy this book. It's, uh, it's the story of a lieutenant in the Air Corps named Josette. And uh, Josette is one of the only women in the military in, in this world, because, you know, early 19th century, obviously they think women should be at home and stuff, right? But they, uh losing a war really badly, and they just need warm bodies, so really the whole plot is just uh, battles and Josette trying to prove herself, and uh, it, it, the plot is honestly about as bare bones as it gets, but uh, it, it's still quite enjoyable. There's a, not really any twists and turns or a mystery or anything, and when it ends, uh, there's obviously still room for a sequel, sure, but I'm not, like, clamoring for the next volume already. Like, I just... I, I read it, and if for whatever reason a sequel never comes out, I'd, I'd be okay with that. This is a nice standalone little story. The rest of this is fairly bare-bones as well. Like, there's really only two major characters in this. There's a couple of side characters and stuff, but really it's just the two. There's Josette, who is the captain of the ship, and, uh... She's pretty typical. She's pretty much exactly what you'd expect for the most part, but I, I still liked her. You know, she's a, uh, just a badass ship captain. Like, she clearly knows what she's doing, but a lot of people around her act like she doesn't know what she's doing. Uh, she does stuff that seems kind of stupid at first, but it turns out to be brilliant, or she just gets lucky and it works out. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> I mean... The only unique aspect of this is that uh, her sort of tomboy masculine nature it uh, causes her to have a strained relationship with her mom. Like, you know, it's a, it's not like her mom is super supportive of this or anything. It's just she, she do doesn't like her mom, her mom doesn't like her, and honestly, that was kind of interesting, but for the most part, she's exactly what you'd expect. The only other main character is this... Uh, dude named Burnett, who is a young nobleman with a gilf fetish. Uh, yes, you heard that correctly, gilf. I'm not explaining what that is. You can, you can Google it yourself, and then you can go uh, splash bleach into your eyes so you can try and forget about it. The first thing I noticed, actually, in this whole book was a couple pages in when they introduced Burnett. He's really funny. <laughs> like, most of the humor just comes from him being an idiot at the beginning. And then, uh, actually the whole book is funny, I should say, because Burnett's an idiot, obviously, for the most part, but then later on in the book, uh, he starts talking with Josette, and they always have snappy retorts, and 
uh, little arguments with each other, and admittedly those did get kind of uh, tiresome after a while, because like they'd be in serious situations and they're trying to like play off laughs and everything, but honestly, it, it was funny. <laughs> hey, I'm not gonna lie, but anyway, so Burnett uh, is a young nobleman and he's running out of money, so he goes to his uncle, who is pretty much the only other character with any screen time in this book, uh, and his uncle really hates Josette and wants to bring her down for reasons which are stupid but also kind of understandable. And uh, so basically he hires Burnett as an observer on her ship and he's supposed to spy on her and send bad news back to her, her uncle or his uncle so that uh, they, they can take her ship away. And he does develop beyond just being an idiot. You know, he, he's, he, he's a good guy at heart, I should say. And honestly, I, I did like him. And like I said, other than that, there's really just no characters in this book at all. There's uh, the crew of the ship, which is called the Mistral, but I, I get the feeling that uh, this author was kind of trying to do something like Firefly, where you just have a whole ship's crew worth of colorful characters, and you just love all of them, and you love their interactions and stuff. But there's re really none of them have enough screen time to get that. I mean, I... Like, I just finished reading this book last night. I can't even recall any of their names. It, yeah, they're, I mean, they're, they're fine. None of them are annoying or anything, but they're also just sort of in the background almost the entire time. So, I mean, like during battles and stuff, they, they tell us about, oh, this ship ca crew member just died, and I'm thinking, oh, well, I don't really care, but I guess that is sad. So this book only has two characters, really. But they're both pretty good. I, I liked both of them. And, uh, there's not a whole lot else to say on this book, honestly. Like, like I said, there's a war going on, and they never actually really go into detail about that. Now, um, how do I put this? Uh, they explain a little bit about why the war is being fought. They're, uh, the two countries, Garnia, where uh, Josette and Burnett and the rest are from, and uh, Vinjalia, are fighting over this one area which has a bunch of resources in it, supposedly. They, they don't even say what kind of resources. And, uh, I mean, that, that makes sense. That's a real thing that countries fight over all the time. But at the same time, they don't really talk about the beginning of the war. They don't go into a lot of detail about how the war's going. They just say Garnia is losing. And... At first, I wasn't sure if that was really smart or really, really bad and stupid. Because, uh, see, at the very beginning of the book, uh, Josette is injured, and it starts off with her, she can't even remember uh, who they're supposed to be fighting, because she's been fighting in so many wars, and their country's been fighting in so many wars that they just sort of blend together, and they lose all meaning. And at first, I thought that was kind of a neat idea. Like, this book was trying to just show the dehumanizing effects of war, and it was trying to tell a dark story and it be anti-war, but then uh, the more time goes on, the more I realized that this book had either... how do I put this? The author had either changed her mind halfway through, or she was just really bad at doing that, because all, like you never see the Vinjalian side of things, and you never really get a sense for why the Garnians are fighting either. Like, apparently there's a diff it's a little bit of a religious war as well, but they almost never mention that outside of the beginning. The whole thing feels pointless, but at the same time, later on, all the battles and stuff, they try and show them as being these glorious, epic uh, moments. And that's, uh, that's fine if you build up to it properly. But in this case, it, it just didn't seem to do that. Like, uh, the final battle in particular, it's it's written well, and it's paced well, and it it is kind of exciting, I'll admit. It just didn't feel earned, I should say. You know, it, uh, it, it feels like it just comes out of nowhere. It, like, it wasn't built up too properly. Um, uh, another example of something that did this, uh, really the only example I can think of off the top of my head, was the bar scene from Suicide Squad, which 
whatever your opinions on that movie, I, I thought it was okay, personally, but, like, that bar scene was pretty good. You know, all the characters are interacting, and everything sort of comes to a head, and they finally discover reasons to fight, etc. But there wasn't really build-up to that, so it just didn't feel earned. And the final battle in this book feels kind of the same way. Like, we don't really feel why they're fighting. Um, the main characters, I liked them, but they didn't really feel like good guys, so I wasn't really rooting for them all that much. I mean, I kind of was. And the enemy just feels like uh, faceless machines rather than people. So, I mean, basically the author here was trying to have it both ways. And for a while I wasn't sure what to think, but just a little bit ago I finally came to the conclusion that it was bad. So, th this book was trying to be a fun action adventure and a dark commentary on war at the same time, and they just clashed too much, it, it didn't work. Not a whole lot else to say. This book was uh, very good, actually. Like, I, I, it's hard to explain why, because you can sum it up in just a couple of sentences. It was funny, the action was good, I liked the two main characters, and that that's really it. It's a, it's a fun adventure, for the most part. Um, and it, it has kind of a neat world. It's a little confusing, they don't explain a lot about it, but it's, it's kind of neat. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's it. Like, I can go into much longer detail about the things I didn't like, but honestly, I don't, I don't see the points. Like, it's a fun book, the bad parts didn't distract me too much, and overall, I would recommend it to anyone that likes... I, I guess I should call it steampunk. It's... <laughs> It might not technically be, but it's close enough. Or uh, military fiction of any sort. Like, in, in both ways, it's very good. So, The Guns Above is a great debut novel, and I look forward to reading more from Robin Bennis. So, you might have noticed by now, I'm basically abandoning my old upload schedule. I'm just going to start up re uploading reviews whenever I'm done with them. Because my last Clan of the Cave Bear review, I had uh, filmed and edited for almost a week before I... Uh, uploaded it and that just felt like a waste of time and energy to do that so for, from now on I'm just gonna upload whenever you know pro hopefully about once a week may or week and a half I should say all right so that's all bye